स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया now this is next domain of our lecture where we will discuss how the age of a particular fossil is predicted there are two broad categories of aging a fossil which is a relative dating and an absolute dating in relative dating the methods like stratigraphy or the use of index fossil is the example whereas if you use a radioactive carbon methods or any other radioactive material based method that comes under absolute dating the difference is as their name suggests this is relative so it is more of a prediction a relative age whereas in this case it is an absolute age we can define relative dating as determination of a fossil's approximate age by comparing it with similar rocks and fossils of known age assume that you have got a fossil and you don't know the actual age of the fossil but you know the age of fossil uh, of the rock where you have found it so based on the prediction of the age by correlating it with the rock's age another example can be if you have got a fossil and side by side you have got another fossil whose age is already known so you can predict the age of this new fossils based on the fossil whose age is already known under this relative dating methods you can have stratigraphy or index fossils as an examples we will discuss that in detail in the coming slide but let's quickly compare this relative dating with absolute dating in absolute dating a precise age of fossil is being determined using radiometric dating methods now this radiometric that dating methods involves the study of decay of isotopes either directly in the fossil itself which you have found or more oftenly the rocks associated with it all the radiometric methods come under this absolute dating methods so the difference as you have seen here lies with the relative nature of this dating method and this is the actual dating methods of the fossil this is more predictive this is more absolute or correct form moving to relative dating methods as we said the first example is stratigraphy stratigraphy is the branch of geology concerned with the order and relative position of strata now what is this strata strata is basically a layer of sedimentary rock or soil so if there are sedimentations each layer is termed as a stratum or the plural is called as strata now this stratigraphy can be used to date the fossils and for that there is a principle in stratigraphy which we call as principle of superposition that is being followed what this principle says is that in an undeformed sequence of sedimentary rocks the oldest rock in the sequence are at the bottom and the one which is youngest is at the top simply putting forward if there are different layers of sediments in a rock the one which is at the base is the oldest one and the newer ones newer strata or layers come over it and the youngest one is at the top you can easily understand this with this diagram if this is a rock and there is a stratigraphy profile of this rock this is the first stratum and this is a stratum or layer above it this is the third fourth and fifth stratum which are forming layer after layer according to this superposition principle the stratum 1 is the oldest and it goes in this direction to the youngest as stratum 5 so using stratigraphy for relative dating says that relative age of a fossil can be predicted using law of superposition means assume that you have found a fossil 
which lies in the stratum 2 and you have found another fossil which lies in the stratum 4. So obviously fossil A is older than fossil B or in other words fossil B is younger than fossil A. So this is the simple relative dating of fossils. Now simply the stratigraphy can be done using physical characteristics of the rock. You can study the rocks or their strata simply by understanding the physical characteristics of the rock. This branch is called as lithostratigraphy. But you can understand stratigraphy or you can understand the strata using the study of fossils which have been found, using the biological characters which have been found in that rock. And if you use these fossils to understand stratigraphy, then we call it as biostratigraphy. So it is a two-way process. At times, you use the characteristics of rock to predict the age of fossils. On the other hand, you use the knowledge of fossils to understand the rocks uh, or stratigraphy as such. It is a two-way process basically. There are certain limitations as well associated with the stratigraphy. For example, we require an undeformed sedimentary rocks if we want to use it for our stratigraphic or biostratigraphic purposes. But usually these layers, they get deformed, these strata get deformed. And the reasons can be the erosion, overthrusting and other changes which are continuously going on in earth. Because of any of these, the sedimentary rock strata, they do not remain undeformed and hence we find it difficult to use it for the stratigraphic purposes. Another problem lies with the deposition of strata, which is usually not uniform at all the places. So if all the layers or strata are not uniformly placed, uniform in size as well, then also we find it difficult to use it for stratigraphic purposes. Another area where we can date the fossils is use of index or guide fossils. These index or guide fossils are fossils used to define and identify geological periods or the faunal stages. Now let's try to assume that you have got a fossil and nearby you have got a brachiopod fossils. We already know that brachiopod fossils are thought to be 410 or 420 million years old. So based on this you can predict that the fossil you have found nearby this brachiopod fossil most likely they were also of the similar age. So here the brachiopod fossil is acting as an index or a guide to age of the fossil that you have found. Similar kind of fossils we have a list with us which we call as index fossils or guide fossils. So if you have found a fossil and nearby you find any of these guide fossils since you know the age of all these guide fossils, you can predict the age of your fossil that you have found. The question comes, how do we define a guide fossil or index fossils? How we designate a particular fossil as guide fossil or index fossil? Remember, there is a criteria that has to be met. And this criteria comprises of three parameters. The fossil in order to be called as index or guide fossil, must have a short vertical range. It should have a wide geographical distribution and it should show the rapid evolutionary trends. So if an index, if a fossil has found all these three characters, then that can be considered as index fossil. And using the age of this, we can predict the age of newer fossils which are being found in that particular location. Moving ahead, in contrast to relative dating, we have something called absolute dating and we have the radiometric methods in absolute datings. Here we use radioactive material to date the fossils. This was firstly introduced by Bertram Boldfoot in 1907. 
this radioactive material or minerals that occur in rocks and fossil they are used as geological clock in the radiometric methods the isotopes break down at a constant rate over time through radioactive de decay and by measuring the ratio of the amount of original isotope with the amount of daughter isotope that it breaks down into an age can be determined now this is the information probably you might have read already through your school days and so i am providing here with a list of various radioactive material based dating methods which are being used depending on what is the age range of application that means depending on the half life of decay of that particular radioactive material that you can choose for aging or dating the fossils for example let's say if it is a radiocarbon dating method which has a range of 1 to 70000 years so if a fossil is lying somewhere in between 1 to 70000 years this kind of predictions can be done using radiocarbon methods but if it is a very old fossils for that radiocarbon is not the suitable method let's say if it is a 1000 to billions of years then it's better to go for potassium argon dating methods and here the methodology has been briefly mentioned for example in radiocarbon dating method radioactive decay of c14 in organic matter after removal from biosphere is being used so these are the overall uh, comparison of various radioactive methods with their age range in application and their methodology and the material dated with them let's quickly discuss about radiocarbon dating methods or carbon dating methods as an example of radiometry this particular method was given by willard f libby in 1949 here you can see a summary of the method it starts when the cosmic radiations enter the earth's atmosphere and collide with the atoms creating an energetic neutron when these neutrons collide with a nitrogen atom a nitrogen 14 atom turns into a carbon 14 atom and this carbon 14 atom is being taken by plants in the form of carbon dioxide and get incorporated through photosynthesis from here it is being taken up by various animals which feed on these plants and when these plants or animals die and get buried the wood and bones coming out of it lose c14 as it changes to n14 by beta decay and this comparison of the original c14 and the leftover c14 can be used as a parameter as a ratio to determine the age of Uh, the fossil using the half life of the carbon now these are not the only methods of dating of fossils besides this relative and uh, absolute methods which we discussed there are other methods also like fission track track dating methods amino acid racemization method paleomagnetic dating methods and luminescence dating methods and so on so depending on the requirement depending on technology the methods can be used but this is just to give you an idea that the dating methods are not limited to what we just discussed then the question comes why do we bother about fossils at all why do we need to study them what is the significance of that so the first significance that comes is the fossils provide us with an physical evidence of evolution If you remember in the previous lecture we discussed about various evidences of evolution and in the paleontological evidences we talked about that the missing links or the transitional fossils provide us with an evidence of evolution or change under different taxons for example if you talk about archaeopteryx which is a transitional fossil or missing links between reptiles and birds it possessed both the features of reptiles and birds hence we can predict that reptile sorry birds have originated probably from reptiles and so on so this kind of connecting links or missing links they provide us with a strong physical evidence of evolution this is just 
the recapitulation of what just I said. The reptilian features and both avian features can be seen in an Archaeopteryx uh, missing link fossil that we have found. And since it is a fossil, that means we do have a physical evidence in our hands that these kind of organisms existed which used to possess both kind of features of reptiles as well as the apes. Now the second example we can take about the phylogeny of organisms. Now in phylogeny or the evolutionary history of horse if you see using the fossils in the form of bone or skull or teeth we have found that various evolutionary trends the horses has undergone from the ancient form of hierocotherium to the modern form that is equus and these transitions were like low to high crown teeth, browser to grazers, pad footed to spring footed and small to large brain size. So again the fossils in the form of these bones, skulls or teeth they have given us sufficient evidence that horse has evolved in this direction. Now Evidence of evolution is not the only uh, significance of fossils. Besides this, they are being used to predict the prehistoric life, the ancient life. They are also used to study the strata or the rocks in geology. They do have chemical app commercial applications associated because they do have links with the oils and minerals. So depending on the fossil, you can predict the oil and minerals. There are also paleogeographic indicators. Paleo means you are ancient and graphic here refers to geographical conditions. So you can predict the geographical conditions of earth. It is not only the prehistoric life but the prehistoric geography also that can be traced back using the fossils. Besides this you can predict the climate also in the prehistoric life. For example, if you have got some fossils, depending on what kind of feed it used to have, what kind of feeding habit it had, you can predict the vegetation. And based on vegetation, you can predict the climate it could have and so on. So there are lots of significance associated with the fossils. Lastly, the question comes, if the fossils are so important if we use them in so much of ways but what is the reason that we still do not have the complete record of fossils why do not we have the complete fossil history of all the organisms so that we can solve so many problems the reason for this incompleteness of fossil records are first the fossils do not form so easily they are not fossil formation for all the organisms. Reason being the suitable conditions for fossilizations are not met. Also all the organisms do not have hard body parts which can be easily fossilized. For example the porphyrins and cylindrates which are mostly soft bodied organisms they do not get fossilized easily. Even if the fossils are formed then most of the time they get destructed and this destruction can be because of the changes which are occurring in the rocks where these fossils are present. The pressure, heat, recrystallization of minerals in these rocks led to the destruction of fossils. Erosion of rocks which carries these fossils because of river, wind or glaciation, they also cause the destruction of the fossils. And with time, automatically also the fossils get degenerated. So it is not only the problem of formation of the fossils but the fossils, most of the fossils also get destructed. Even if the fossils are formed and they are not destructed, there are problems with the finding of them. Most of the fossils are still unnoticed. We have not found them, we have not noticed them. Also there are practical uh, limitations associated with them. We are unable to dig out the locations where these fossils are predicted to be existing. Even if we know the locations, we are unable to reach those locations. So the locations are inaccessible as such. So it is about 
the right conditions which are required for the fossil formation the right time of the formation and finding of the uh, fossils the right place so that we can dig it out and we can study them we can approach those locations and so on and the right technology and skills which a technologist should be assisted with in order to have a complete fossil records besides the other limitation of forming or the formation of the fossils we do require these conditions so that we can at least have more fossils to study so with this we'll finish off with this lecture let's quickly summarize what we discussed in this we started our session with the terms paleontology and fossils what do they mean and how they are correlated how the fossils are presenting an important evidence of evolution then we moved to various methods of fossil formation where we discussed the procedures the mechanisms of formation of fossils we moved ahead with understanding of different types of fossils then we discussed what is the significance of fossils why do we study them and then the dating methods or aging of fossils how do we carry out the understanding of age of fossils and lastly we discussed something about why our fossil record is still incomplete so with this we'll end this session here is the list of the books which you can refer for understanding of fossils this is Wrigley and another one by Holland Hargreaveson and by Douglas J. Futuyama which you can refer. Thank you so much and happy learning.